Hi, my name is Aditi Sriram, and I'm here talking to Tom Reese about the Black Count, Glory, Revolution, Betrayal, and the Real Count of Monte Cristo. We're in New York City at the writing program of the New School. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hi, Aditi. It's good to be here. Well, I'm glad that you could make it. Um, as you know, we're doing a short interview sort of talking about the Black Count and your writing sort of evolution and how you've come mm -hmm. here to the NBC nominations. And first of all, congratulations on that. Thank you. It's very um, exciting for me. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I had, I guess, an opening question about how you came to the topic and the subject of um, Alexandre Dumas and sort of personal connections, historical, literary, whatever those might have been. So if you could maybe speak about that to begin with. Well, I, in the book, I talk about that only in the acknowledgments of mm -hmm. the book. As you know, when I thank my mom at the end right. of the book, it's sort of the last paragraph of, of the book before, I guess, the, all the sources. I thank my mother, who in some ways gave me the original inspiration, because my mom was um, a war refugee from France, so she was uh, lost her parents during the Nazi occupation, and then she managed to survive the war, and then was, as the story goes, was in this orphanage in Paris after the war, and got a care package with the first kind of real book anybody had given her, an adult book, she was a really little kid, and that book was The Count of Monte Cristo in this old um, battered edition, and she read it under the covers, um, as I would later hear, and there was a curfew, and she was so oh. addicted, as everybody is when they're reading right. The Count of Monte Cristo, that she couldn't stop reading, and the people who, who ran the place uh, caught her and took the book away, and she didn't get it back for six months until the people who then adopted her and took her to the United States gave her another edition to sort of um, uh, cheer her up slash win her over. And it was then the one book she brought when mm -hmm. she came here. Oh, wow. And I grew up with that being a slight sort of literary symbolism in our house okay. was that my mom's old copy of The Count mm -hmm. of Monte Cristo um, was there. And I knew the backstory, the story behind it, which is also this sort of big um, fascination with me with uh, Europe and the Europe that was sort of lost with mm. the Nazis and World War II and then uh, with France also mm. and and I think that I was always fascinated by Dumas and um, by France in sort of some big bigger way what France stood for and um, it's tri the triumph and tragedy of liberté, égalité, fraternité mm. and um, I also just loved Alexandre Dumas as a kid as a writer and um, I was such a big fan that one, uh, once I had gone through all the novels when I was about 12 or 13, I found his memoirs. And okay. the, this is where my subject, General Dumas, mm -hmm. first came to me as an as a adolescent. And I read about the, the first, really the first 200 pages of the writer, Alexandre Dumas' memoirs, don't even mention himself. Right. He isn't born until the end of uh, book one. And that's because he has to spend all this time on this forgotten man, mm -hmm. his, his father, his lost father, who was more than lost, who was taken from him, taken from him by, as I would find, the racism, conspiracy, the sort of downfall of French ideals. So mm -hmm. in some ways, the story just resonated a lot with right. issues that I always have thought about. And um, of course, I also just was swept away with the story of this incredible man who's sort of comes across in when you first encounter him as a combination of the Three Musketeers and the Count of Monte Cristo exactly. in, in one person, kind right. of. And it, it seems surreal, or it seems like a fictional character, and mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to know how much of it was true. Which is fascinating, because I think for, for most readers today, you think Dumas and you think the novelist. And even with your previous mm -hmm. book, The Orientalist, um, when I hear that word, I think Edward Said, who was you know, prominent in the second half of the 20th century, but really your subject there was someone from the first half of the 20th century, a Jew from the Muslim East, at, at this very sort of, uh, sort of confused historical time. So you seem to have this syncopated approach to your subjects, which, which I think is sort of great, and maybe if you could talk about um, that in a, well, in a little bit. Yeah, thank you. thanks for that word. I like, the, <laughs> I like the word syncopated approach to history. I mean, maybe I'll use that, because that, 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 that does seem to me like something that uh, links my subjects together. Um, I really love these characters who were outsiders 
in their period and who give me an access to the period and to these big great historical moments that's that's very different from any kind of conventional story of some someone who had a sort of the people that we think of and for instance the character you just mentioned in my first book the Orientalist was a Jewish man born in Baku Azerbaijan during the first Russian Revolution who flees the in flees the big Russian Revolution on a camel caravan to Afghanistan reinvents himself as a sort of Jewish Lawrence of Arabia comes back and settles in Germany right before the Nazi um, takeover and then becomes a novelist best-selling sort of celebrity novelist in Nazi Germany so everything is very unlikely it almost sounds like you know this people who invent themselves almost like fictional characters mm -hmm. but it's also just a story of um, that gives me an access to these big events that have always fascinated and troubled me um, you know things that I can't stop thinking about the what happened to Europe and to the West in and the whole world in the early 20th century as a result of the upheavals of the Russian Revolution and of the Nazis but through his story I'm seeing it from the perspective of a man coming really from Afghanistan uh, from Afghanistan through Persia and Constantinople and arriving in Germany in right. the 20s but it's not a complete it, it wouldn't work for me in some ways if he was just from Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. What is great is that he is a man who was already an outsider in the Muslim East, and mm -hmm. he's a Jew at the time. So he's got the all the problems of a Jewish person um, living in the 20s and 30s in 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 Nazi occupied Europe, but he has syncopated them, as you right. said, by right. adopting this. Um, uh, really invented identity mm -hmm. as a Muslim prince that he kept up for all these years right. and in the same way in the case of the Black Count my main character Alex Dumas gives me a way of seeing uh, the really big I've always been fascinated by the sort of birth of racism in the West which I would say really happened at the right before the Enlightenment and mm -hmm. in sort of the birth of the European slave trade and sort of um, codification right. of, 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 of blacks as, as, as slaves and all this that's sort of that went on in this really 17th 18th century and then the great American and French revolutions which 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 promise everything to humanity and, and promise to sort of be the counterpoint and liberate everyone um, but um, I'm getting access to the French Revolution and to the slave trade from the perspective of this boy, Alex Dumas, who arrives at age 14 in France as a slave, listed in a ship's manifest mm -hmm. as a slave, and then within a year is being trained to be yeah. an aristocrat and a gentleman mm -hmm. in the shadow of, Ver of Versailles right. and the, the court, and then who then uh, joins the army and rises to outrank Napoleon and, right. and do all these, sort of take every advantage of an incredible forgotten moment mm -hmm. when blacks were emancipated and more than that were, were sort of kind of, there was this crash course in, in integrating French society in mm -hmm. a kind of modern way, almost 21st century way that happened and was completely forgotten. But I'm able to rediscover it because right it's there in the story of this man like right. there's and, and it's almost it would be very hard to write this as a if you if you if I decided to write it as just a, a history of this forgotten um, civil rights movement mm -hmm. which which to me I, I mean that's one of the important parts of the book sure. is this forgotten civil rights movement that took place at the heart of the world's worst slave empire at mm -hmm. the time which is the French slave <laughs> empire right. gave birth to the world's first civil rights movement, or modern world's first civil rights movement, but it would all be kind of academic and removed. Yeah. Um, and it would also, it would just be, yeah, it would be hard for me to place myself inside it. So that's the beauty right. of biography, True. and especially of biography of a uh, kind of forgotten, suppressed person. It's, mm -hmm. it's as though you can, gives me a way to find a forgotten and suppressed part of history. Right. Well, one of the, the most beautiful parts of the book for me, or sort of most powerful, were the um, series of letters that Dumas has written to his son, that, that we get from his wife's father telling folks about 
the, the you know, impending marriage, and just, there's so much documentation and correspondence, which yeah. obviously was big at the time. But sort of two, two questions about that. One is, you know, this stuff is all in French, um, and so I wonder how that affected you putting all of it together, reading it in 18th century French, um, these old papers, I'm assuming, and then putting it into English, but also how you got access to all this great material, and if mm. there's any fun, I mean, I think that there is a fun story yeah. about that in, in, in the book, and maybe you could share a little bit of that. Well, I mean, that's part of the fun of writing about characters who really haven't been seriously written about before right. and who have been very sort of, in some way, their life has been swept aside mm -hmm. um, or um, uh, kind of, in, this ca in the case of Dumas, really written out of history exactly. by uh, his enemies, was that, um, you know, the chase for the hunt for documents becomes well, for one thing, it becomes but it's part of the adventure. It's really sure. becomes so, so 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 that's fun, but uh, it's also gives me access to another sort of emotionally powerful part of the story. I guess people who write contemporary biography, you know, it's a, a, a lot of it will be about that they would get that through interviewing right. the the people who remember, mm -hmm. you know, Lyndon Johnson or right. uh, or whoever the subject is right, right. now. In the case of Alex Dumas, obviously nobody, I'm, I'm not meeting anybody who has direct memories of him, sure. he's died 200 years ago, but the fact that his life was suppressed, and in, especially in France, where mm -hmm. he was once a great hero, he has been sort of written out, means that the, or what, what it ended up meaning, I guess I wouldn't have known this before I started looking, was that the people who led me to what I needed were people who had this really strong emotional connection to the Dumas family and to okay. this legacy and to this lost man, who mm -hmm. they also got kind of wind of through his son's memoirs okay. and just felt like he was, you know, not necessarily for the reasons that he was a great uh, black, you know, man, but really just that he was uh, a great Frenchman, a great, mm -hmm. a great, well, how could there be this great the hero of the revolution who had been written out of history. And I, I did a very obvious thing to look for things. I went to the uh, this little village 75 miles um, northeast of, Par of okay. Paris where the general died and where the novelist was born mm -hmm. in um, at the beginning of the 19th century. And I did the equivalent of kind of hanging around. Um, okay. And even though it was 200 years later, because um, of uh, something about the play. I mean, I think you get this when you go to the place sometimes. Um, I just got lucky and there were, um, well, a series of, of, of people who I met who were very attached to, one of them was very attached to the, he had grown up in the former house where the oh, wow. general died okay. and then the father had tried to sell it to the town to make it a museum, but the general was sort of too much of a forgotten character. The town didn't want to pay the money to buy it, so then it's wow. owned by you know uh, a, a veterinarian who sort of puts up a keep out sign, and it's sort of this guy then decides he needs to form a um, something to try to a little society of, of of people to try to support the memory of Dumas in the town, and you know all of twelve people join. But the the point is, one person to another leads me. Um, Back, kind of, these are people who they don't really know anything, but they know the spirit of this right. this great guy. Anyway, through them, I met this uh, woman who had been kind of collecting documents um, on behalf of the town with an endowment um, created a hundred years ago that sort of people had forgotten about. But she'd been sort of using it to buy um, things at auction, anything connected to him for a long time. And I arranged to meet her, and uh, this was kind of the beginning of my the intense quest, um, and this is about five years ago, and I dawdled a bit, and then when I finally got to the town, everybody was looking at me fairly sheepishly when I wanted to meet this woman, Elaine, and they, the reason they were awkward was that Elaine had just passed away, very yeah. suddenly. She had gotten okay. ill suddenly, she wasn't old, she had died. If I'd showed up um, six weeks earlier, oh, we wow. could have just met and done what we'd said, but I had sort of talked to her the previous summer and thought, okay, it's a 200-year-old story, I can take my time, but the woman died, and then in, as though it was an Alexander Dumas novel, she had put all of the, everything she'd been collecting for years into a safe, 
in her office and she had died without telling anyone the combination. She lived uh, alone and uh, they searched her office, they searched all her things, nobody, we tried every possible uh, sort of Duma Birthday like and birthday <laughs> or all for one, one for all, nothing worked. Sure. And uh, it was kind of hopeless. And then I had to set about this project of figuring out how do I allow, how do I get the this provincial government to essentially allow me to bring a safe cracker into a government building and blow right. open a safe. Right. Which. You know, I, I, I think it's all of two or three pages at mm -hmm. the beginning of my book yes. in the introduction, but it gives a flavor to people of what it's like to be on this kind of a, a quest. It's also right. what makes it fun for me, Absolutely. frankly. It's, it's, it's different, you know, if I was doing a, a more established figure, I wouldn't have had the fun of learning how to blow up in a safe, so that was and fun. That, that's always a great learning experience, Exactly. Like, sure. Yeah. In case this biography thing doesn't work out, right. um, I've got a couple of other <laughs> things up my sleeve. So I guess as maybe a, a wrapping up kind of question, what next? Where, which safes and which towns do you plan on hitting next? And do, um, you, do you do you care to reveal to us what you're thinking about? I can't reveal it yet. Okay. But uh, what I mean, what I will say is I'm I'm going to continue on. I've got this bug for um, people who lived uh, kind of syncopated. <laughs> um, I'm going to patent that. Sy I think. Sy syncopated <laughs> lives at moments of great civilizational mm -hmm. kind of upheaval change sure. things like that so i'm looking now at a couple of such characters in america okay so this will probably be my next book be my first time in a way like i'm a child of immigrants mm -hmm. and i've explored my sort of immigrant ex experiences right. my family's experiences in eastern europe and then now in france mm -hmm. and the connection between france and america and i'm finally ready <laughs> after you know uh, a whole lifetime i'm ready sure. to finally write as an american on a purely american subject so that's Excellent. what i'll do well i look forward to reading that and uh, thank you so much once again Tom. Okay, it was a great honor thank you thank you